that executive aisle. That's the one of the best perks of even all this travel is that we got that. You know, so when we go yeah. personal travel, and, you know, you're able to just go grab, get your car, you're good. Oh, and uh, my favorite part of it is you don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to talk to anybody. Yeah. You just walk past the person. Executive aisle? Yes. And you just go to your car. I, I like, because after getting off a plane, I don't want to talk to anybody. No. I don't want you to, oh, are you here for business or pleasure? Yeah. Uh, how was your flight? Like, yeah. no. The small talk. Just give me my damn car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when that's traveling, you just go from line to line to line to line, just waiting and waiting. And then yeah. even at the rental car, you go look over and, you know, the other brands or whatever got eight people, All nine li- people in yeah, line. Yeah, lines, oh, awful, you're like, yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. You can just do why this. Why subject yourself to that of another line and like, oh, well, which one would you like? Would you like to upgrade? I hate the pitch. Yeah. You know, Enterprise did that to us for a while. We went to, we went to Scotland and we went and they're like, well, it's $45 and I could see you driving around. It's kind of like, no, 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 yeah. don't try it. I'm selling it. I just want to go. Give me the car. I paid for this car already. Give me the car. Yeah. And the, yeah. yeah. The it's, line, though. It was like eight people, though. The, the line is my, yeah. my least favorite part. Or the, uh, sometimes I'll go in. It's like Phoenix. And there's like the few obscure rental car companies that you've never heard of. Yeah. That have like 30 person lines in them. And it's like, they must be giving out really good deals or something. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the deal is or just have terrible customer service. <laughs> right. Too good to be true. People that rent cars, you know, once every five years, they think, oh, it's the cheapest. I'm yeah. going to go with them. And then they get right. And there's a reason yeah. for it. Yeah. They figure that out. Yeah. Have None you tried, any, tried any of the apps or anything that, that were the, you know, the cars are built? Yeah. I, I, those I, right. I no, I idea. just, that's as far as I'm concerned, witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> and I, like it's, it's, I like, I like the reputable the, the reputable ones because in the event of a wreck you turned it in yeah. it's not your problem anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah. right right yeah. what is that kind of stuff i don't know how it yeah. works yeah. yeah who knows so it's nice to just go with the big because i did mm, it was like three or four years ago i wrecked a forerunner a rental car uh but it, it was a wreck that i could still drive it yeah so then i just returned it it was like this one i got <laughs> yeah. the record no and there and there he looks over he's like yeah you wrecked it i'm like yep He's like, okay. And you give him the key and he does his paperwork and <laughs> that's that. good. Yeah. That's, that's worth it in itself right there. Yeah, you, you pay the, the deductible, ease. whatever yeah. it is, and yeah, yeah. You're, you're on your way. And I, I did try the Turo once. I went to Hawaii and I went to go pick up a Turo and uh, I got there and uh, like, oh, well, you know, mm, we don't really have that one. So let's, let's get you in this other one. And it's like an old G-Wagon. The windows didn't go down or anything like that. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to get an Uber and I'm going back to... I think I went back to Enterprise at the time because we used them a lot and went and got an Enterprise one. But I wasted probably two hours of my life on the first part of our trip to Hawaii just well, trying to get in a vehicle. And what was, was the original car? It was like a 4Runner, I think. Oh. Yeah, because they left Toyotas down there in, in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, they had a 4Runner available. I was like, oh, cool, that's fine. I'll take yeah. that. But yeah, and they tried pawning me off on like an old G-Wagon with like 180,000 miles. I'm like, no, G-Wagon. I'm good. Yeah, I'm like, I'm good. Uh, I don't, A, I don't want to be seen in this. B, the windows don't come down. <laughs> like, all right, I'm good. I'll just go back to Enterprise and get like a Camry or something. Well, I don't care. A, G- a G-Wagon, I, they're pretty baller, but it's impossible to get out of a G-Wagon and not look like an asshole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I didn't, I didn't want to like do you it. You could be the nicest guy. You, get, you, just, you, just, you just look like that you guy. You're done. A couple yeah. pegs. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just it. Like, A, I didn't want to look like that guy. And you look like an asshole when it's a brand new G-Wagon. This yeah. thing was... It was old. So like, out. like, who's this guy trying to be? Like, this thing's got 190,000 miles on it and the, the windows don't roll down. Like, this guy is yeah. something. So, yeah, I didn't want to mess with that. So I went back to Enterprise. So I, that was my one experience with Turo. Um, <laughs> Noted. Yeah. In um in Dubai, G-Wagons are like Camrys. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everybody has one yeah. G-Wagon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like the entry-level vehicle. Yeah. They, they were just everywhere. So you turn crazy. 16, you get a G-Wagon to... To drive, yeah. to learn on, and all the cabs are Mercedes typically, and they're all painted um, like tan. Really? Yeah, they're not yellow. They all they all have to be the same color, so they're Weird. these tan Mercedes. Just match the sand. They're good. I I don't know yeah. what it is. I it, I've seen that like in Europe too. They all have to be the same color. I don't know, but yeah, G wagons everywhere, everywhere. Probably one in two G wagons just goes right to the Middle East. <laughs> How long were you in Dubai for? Uh, we were only there two nights. Oh, okay. Because oh, wow. we. Uh, we were in Saudi Arabia <clears throat> and then I was just going to fly home, but it's like, I'm in the Middle East. Dubai's right next door. Gotta an hour and a half flight. Yeah. I was like, come yeah. on, let's go see Dubai for two days. Yeah. So I, we flew to Dubai and I, I remember it was like Sunday and I was sitting at the pool and this was in January, uh, sitting at the pool, 80, 85 degrees in Dubai. 
And then that Thursday, I was in North Dakota oh, <laughs> in January. A little yeah. bit of a difference. Bismarck, North Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful area. Just that like, time of year. The, the, yeah, just the whiplash <laughs> uh, between those two extremes. Was, yeah. It was just a weird, God. weird week. Yeah, I can imagine. Your body was very confused at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my body was like, what is going yeah. on I here? In, I was in Dubai. No Bismarck. Yeah. So what'd you get to do in Dubai? We just walked around. Just hung out. I just want to see it. Yeah. yeah. We went to the, the mall, which is really cool. Did okay. it have the fucking Did it have the skiing? Was that the one that has the ski um, slope at it? That's a different mall. Okay. Yeah. We went to like the main mall underneath the really tall building. Okay. okay. Um, and the fountains are there and, and they have these this light show. The whole building lights up. That the, they, they don't really show Cal- you that Cal- part on the, the Cal- Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa, yeah. Yeah, they don't show that on the internet, but the whole thing is like a, yeah. almost like a TV screen. There's like this laser show and we went <laughs> really? to the beach. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. I mean, I've been there now, so it's like, it's not top of my list to go back. There's yeah. a lot of other places I'd rather go because like around there, I want to go to Bahrain, Qatar. Um, there's so many cool places yeah. around there to go. There really is. Yeah. Yeah, Qatar is a wild one there was a race that they had over in qatar and me and the wife wanted to go but yeah kind of well the logistics of it just didn't make sense at the time a friend of mine said going to the austrian grand prix was cheaper than going to the miami grand prix really yeah yeah makes sense yeah because tickets are actually affordable at yeah. the european races yeah but in the states going to a race yeah we were just talking about that like yeah. going to f1 in vegas it's Ve- well, vegas is stupid because they only have i think like five thousand general admission tickets it was gone like that. Yeah, yeah, which was just gone. Yeah. And then everything else, it's you upsets. either have to pay, like drop some serious coin for, or know somebody that's dropping some serious yeah. coin for. But yeah. Like every hotel room in this in the whole city sold out. Oh, yeah. And you go into those hotels and you just look at how many fucking rooms there are. And it's like, how could this ever be sold out? Yeah, how that could, many people. Right, right. How is that possible? But I guess it is. Yeah, I, I think everyone's just, you know, the first real one that we're going to get out that way. So I think everyone's just excited to go and yeah, we'll see if it's worth it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm already having my, I'm having second thoughts about it, but we're going. Um, fun, fun fact. I, and I'll, I'll shut the fuck up about random <laughs> stuff. I, uh, so I was out there and, and I saw the paving, which was spectacular. Yeah. They, they run three pavers side by side by side. Yeah. Echelon paving. The, the the binder is very specific. The aggregate's very specific. Everything about it is is and, and all the rollers are running GPS and every uh, paver's running thermal imaging and it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. But we were in front of the Bellagio mm-hmm. and I remember taking a picture of one of the pavers in front of the Bellagio at the Bellagio in the background. But there were trees because when you're by the fountains, yeah. there's those big trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at a picture the other day of them setting up for the race because it's in November, beginning of November, and uh, there weren't any trees. They 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 had a they crane. Them? Yeah, they, they they're sitting really? in planters. These massive yeah. trees that they can just <laughs> they can Dude, just move. That's wild. And, and it's like just money. That, that's the most Las Vegas thing <laughs> yeah. I've ever wow. seen. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. different world out there. There were for no sure. more trees in front of the Bellagio. Yeah, gone. Because I can bring them right back. Well, I think they're. I think they're. I don't know where they're setting up the grandstands, but it might be on the fountain. Oh, like really? they did for oh, the uh, really? <clears throat> like, okay. yeah, like they did for the the draft. Oh, I didn't know they did that. Didn't they, or maybe COVID fucked it up. But they were know. supposed to have the draft on the Bellagio fountain. Really? Yeah, I, I did not know that. that. I'm not a sports ball person, for the record. I, Full I disclosure. Could give, I could give a, yeah, but no I, shits about the draft. I know, but like when people talk about it, like I'm like instant like panic and like what um the draft that's is that uh, is that all the sports is that some of the sports and well, you did good earlier the job we just stopped by the guy knew you're from denver he's like oh you're an abs fan oh yeah you want to have conversations so you're talking yeah. to him and yeah. he's like yeah he's like we we did good you know but we've had some tough seasons it's like you could say that about everything that was yeah. perfect yeah it was, it was great but yeah, that's like, that's the fun thing about sports is you can carry a conversation with somebody like that yeah. without knowing a whole lot yeah oh yeah and until they start getting like oh did you see like blah 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 and the statistics i'm like no, 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 but then, <laughs> then you just keep agreeing with it. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Totally. Man. That keep... isn't that crazy. Yeah. Like, you could, you can get pretty deep in yeah. without knowing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've done it my whole life. Like, dude, <laughs> in business, people, like, that's all they want to talk about is sports. And yeah. I know some have, like, an oval-shaped ball, and some have a round ball, and some have a puck. <clears> and that's about the extent of my knowledge. And I just, yeah, I really just go into it, and you just let, you just nod a lot and smile. And that's it. Who's your favorite player? You, you're. 
everyone likes to talk about themselves. So just ask them about their favorite people and they'll just run with it. Like, oh God, keep it off me. Don't ask my favorites. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, I think it was this morning. It was like the top, the four highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. And I didn't know three of them. Like I'd never heard of three of these guys' names. I was like, huh, that's interesting. But they're cumulatively paid. I think it's a billion dollars in contracts <laughs> between the four of them. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'll throw that. Which, the is, which is one Saudi f- soccer contract <laughs> these days. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> but still not bad. Yeah. That's wild. Um, so you guys, you guys deal in vacuums. Back trucks, yeah. Well, a little bit of everything. Back trucks, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you're vacuum yeah. guys. Vacuum yeah. guys. Kirby. Yeah. You've heard of yeah, Kirby? Kirby? Yeah. We come door to door. Yeah. We throw things on your carpet and we suck them up, you know? Yeah. People love us. I was just trying to minimize what you guys do <laughs> as much as I could. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, we should have brought a freaking vacuum in with us yeah. and just set it right there in the shot. Yeah, but but I that's in in some ways that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's giant, giant so, vacuum. Yeah. So to explain to somebody that has no idea, the best way it's literally a shop vac that's hooked yeah. up to a power washer. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's really it. You <clears throat> switch out the nozzles to the power washer, and you know just the size of a of the shop vac changes, right? And yeah, suction and that type of stuff. But you can do anything you could imagine with a you know shop vac on a, that kind of a scale. Yeah. Um, What's a uh, typical application is utility locating. Yep. So that's potholing. Uh, ex- just explain potholing in uh, layman terms. It's essentially where you just in you go above the utility, you hide your back down uh, until you, you you daylight the item, so they can look down, they can see the depth, what a below what what it is below grade. They can see um, they can see the utility, and then you know if they're boring under it, they they know exact depths. Um, or if, if they're doing anything, they have to tie into it and they yeah. don't want to dig mechanically around it in, in case of, <clears throat> of damaging the utility, but, uh, just so you can get eyes on the utility without having to damage it. Yeah. You tip, uh, like you'll have the utility located. So mm-hmm. you'll be looking at some paint mark on the yeah. asphalt, this yellow. Yeah. There's a gas line. And, and they can vary on, you know, they, they have their limitations on how far you can be off of those marks as well. So sure. that's another reason why people like to get eyes on it. So they yeah. Can well, but that, and, and so that's why you do it is. They say it's here, right below this mark, at this depth, but it doesn't always happen that way. No. For very various reasons. Yes. And so that's what the VAC truck allows you to do is to, for sure, yes, the gas line is at four and a half feet right below this hole. Yes. Defin- definitively ensure that it is right there. Because, yeah, some people, it's, it's, it's a huge uh, issue we have in the industry is for varying reasons. Um your your locates aren't always spot on. Yeah. Um, when did when did Vac trucks start to become popular? Oh god, they've been around for a while. They um, have. It historically has been an oil and gas item. So oil and gas uh, really took to to Vac trucks. Um, they cleaned out rig pits. They do yeah. plant work. Um, you know, I I feel in here in North America especially, um, and even up in Canada, uh, oil and gas is kind of the the tip of the spear, and then it just kind of soaked outside the, the industry into different utility sectors and applications and yeah um it's starting to almost become standard in a lot of places like i feel like yeah. some are, are some some places are probably even required yeah and that's like a typical job for us will be you know in a neighborhood and they might run a new sewer line or gas line down the down the main street and so like you said we'll go out all the lines electric you know sewer gas all, all these are, are marked by 811 before us we have to go um locate them with, with the Hyderback truck to say that they're exactly there. And then the power company a lot of times mandates them. They can't do anything until everything's been potholed. Mm-hmm. And then they say, you know, absolutely not. And if you're within, <laughs> you know, 10 foot of this line, you know, you have to have to Hyderback it. Yeah. You know, if, if you got a paint mark in somebody's front yard and you're on the other side of the street, you're fine. But, you know, if you get in that, that zone, they, you know, it's a law that they require you to do it. Yeah. And yeah. It's just getting more prevalent, more prevalent ev- everywhere we go. Every, I, I, yeah, I, I see them more and more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes I've seen contractors buying them. It's, yeah. It's, it, there's, there are vac trucks everywhere now. Everywhere. Awesome. Yep. And the, the, the different uses are pretty cool because, like, at the Chimney Hollow project for Barnard, I saw one of your trucks out there and they had to clean all the rock um, before they started placing the dam material. Yes. So yeah. they had to strip all the dirt away and get, like, the spec on this this rock face that yes. they needed was super super specific, and they needed it clean. Yeah, yeah. So they they had some guys out there with power washers power washing the rock. Yeah, across a three thousand foot dam. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, they were cleaning a lot of rock, <laughs> and then they had the vac truck there with the hose with like a hose extension leading down to where they were uh, power washing yep. to suck up the water. Yeah, that they were, uh, and and 
sediment that they were washing off the rock. Right. Yeah. How else would you do that? I mean, how else if that if, if that's yeah. required for like for the inspection process and stuff, you know, we'll even wash out, um, you know, <laughs> concrete drainage. And I mean, you have to wash it off for the inspector to come check it out. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, you could run water there, but then you got water running everywhere. So yeah. if you don't have a vacuum on the end of it, I mean, how else would you do that stuff? We we had a really cool job up in Boise mm -hmm. where um, they were trying to do an underground storage facility and they ran into lava. Um, with, you know, there, there was no utility lines in the way, so uh -huh. you don't need a hydrovac truck. But as they're trying to dig down, they ran into lava. Well, you know, so they brought us in and we literally just power washed the top of the lava. And uh -huh. then because it's a porous base, they could use that as their drainage material. And it worked out, you know, perfect for them. But, oh, I mean, how I else, see. you know, there's a huge, I mean, that thing was, you know, several hundred feet long. Oh, yeah. It's like, know. I think it's 400 by 100. Yeah. It was a massive, like a, a yeah, just a retention pond that they used. And, uh. Yeah, we just spent days out there with multiple vacs, just just power washing cleaning. the lava. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it up. yeah, um, yeah. And it, it it collects it all in this big tank on the truck, and then you just dump that somewhere. Yeah, but it's technically considered hazardous material. Or uh, no, no, only if you run it like hydrocarbons or I got you. Um, if a utility um, had a release in any way, shape, or form. Um, but for the vast majority of the stuff, it's just. It just spoils, like normal spoils pile. You know, I saw, this is my, so it might have been New York. I feel like it's considered, uh, you can't go dump it anywhere in New York, but New York is New York. There, yeah. So this was on yeah. Long Island. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what I'm thinking of it. Yep. But they have this facility, Basilico does, they have this wash plant. Yes. And uh, they, the vac trucks back in and they dump everything into like this grate. Yep. And then it goes into the wash plant and is cleaned. And so they remove the sediment. And then they, they remove the aggregate and they separate the aggregate and sell all of the pieces of it back, back into the market yeah. after they clean it. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. It is. It's, it's wild. <laughs> but um, I think that's super just expensive. New York thing. Yeah, that's yeah. New York. That's, it's, yeah, that's, yeah. It's, it's, it's becoming more, um, I would say, mandated yet. Yeah, I don't think in Canada, but so Canada, California, New York um, are kind of trying to put uh, a process in place like that to capture the majority of stuff. Um, and and it, you know, like I said, it, it it just varies on, on where you're at and the regulations behind on how you can dump, where you can dump, yeah. uh, how each product line gets or, or, or service gets treated or where it has to go. Some areas can get discharge permits on right-of-ways and stuff. They, they can dump it out on the right-of-way so you can put it, let it dry and put it back in. So you're not having to truck in different material to back your holes. And we have uh, a couple of trucks that we can dig with air. So we have air compressors on. So instead of digging mm -hmm. with water, you know, we dig with air and that stuff you can, you can dump right back on site. Yeah, um, I... I saw that done in New York. They were, they had, they had the main power cables for Manhattan Oof. that were these monster cable. Like they were like, uh, it was like 12 inch and it was uh, within uh, oil cooled lines. Oh, wow. So that's how big these power cables were. They had to be oil cooled that's at all wild. times. And they had to expose all of these lines because they needed to, they were doing work in the area. And so they thought, well, while we're in the area, might as well expose these lines and they had to wrap them all in carbon fiber to to prevent corrosion for the next 50 years. Wow. These are like, you do not mess with these. Yeah. And they had to have the, like the air knives in there kind of to Clean. get this, to get the sand from, from all of these because yeah. they couldn't touch it with even a shovel. That's insane. Which was pretty, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Yeah. New York's a, a different animal <laughs> at all by itself. It's. Yeah, so, but the the um, the versatility of vac trucks is oh, yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's that's really the, the you know the driving force with even with us internally is I started out having just a construction company. Yeah, um, I met Brad in 2015, and he was seven vac trucks to work for us doing pipeline stuff and and a bunch of different stuff doing facility builds. So and, you were doing vac trucks first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's how we got into it, Brad. No, no kidding. Yeah, he came along and I got gotcha. you. Did all the hydrovac work. Um, and that was in the oil patch in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was in the oil field. He was from New Mexico and they moved up here. Uh, well, not here. We're in Tennessee now, but they moved to Colorado and yeah. they're working pretty closely with us. And, you know, I, I saw the value in hydrovac trucks, but at the same time, I, I only saw it as like an internal service to just kind of mitigate having to call Badger mm -hmm. or any of the other uh, competition. Um, but as things as regulation changed, as requirements, SOPs, everything like that changed, it just became more and more uh, evident that it's going to become just a part of everyday life as needing those in the in the dirt world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's in some way, shape or form. It's a growing market. That's it for is. Sure. It yeah. is. It and is. that I mean, that's the struggle with <clears throat> like you were in oil and gas. It's a very cyclical world. Yeah. 
So when it's good, it's yeah. really good. When it's not good, it's yeah. really, really not good. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. lot of ramen noodles. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like Earthwork is, it's, it's not a growing market. Uh, I mean, it is in Denver, for example, but it's not as growing as the utilities market, for example, yeah. Yeah. utility locating, back trucks, that kind of thing. That's, that's a new market that's expanding across the entire United States. Whereas if you're building an earth moving company, in a lot of ways, you're going to have to chip away at somebody else's market share. Yeah. yeah. And they don't want to give it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, right. They're holding right. on. Yeah, as, it's going to be a fight. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, we talk about that all the time. I mean, it doesn't matter politically who gets in, like infrastructure spin, like that's all, that's all a thing for, you know, both sides and everything like that's, that's never going to end. And so, you know, Cam had, had a good vision. So it was about in 2000, yeah, 15, I sold to him. I went and did my, my own thing for a while. And then he called me in 2019. He's like, um, you know, he's kind of, I'm sick of only being in oil and gas. He wants to keep that part of you know legacy piece of his business, mm -hmm. but he's like, it's time to, I want to focus on the utility side of this. You mm -hmm. know, he's like, will you come back and help me kind of expand across the country? Um, and so that's what we've done since 2019 by chasing these utility companies and, you know, the infrastructure dollars that are going into this, but I mean, electric grids, you know, for the electric vehicles. And I mean, the, think about all the stuff that they're putting in the ground. Um, in the southeastern United States are doing, you know, storm hardening projects where they're burying every power line mm -hmm. because every time they get a hurricane, it knocks mm -hmm. out power to, you know, millions of people. Yeah. Well, I was like, let's bury the power and we don't have to worry about that anymore. And so these aren't projects that are you know, going to be over in three years. You know, these are these are forever no. projects. Well, even um, there's undergrounding in California, for example, for wildfires. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a multi-billion dollar pro program right now with PG&E to try yeah. to put as much of their power underground as possible because yeah. they can't start a fire underground. Yeah. Right. Um, and then and then that's not even including all of the uh, like I was with Shea and Aspen and yeah. he's re replacing all of the power infrastructure downtown Aspen over like a 10 year period. Yeah. That's because it's all from the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just past its design life. Yeah. And we don't want to be burning Aspen down, so yeah. we're going to have to replace it all. Well, that's the best thing is we, we have the, the new construction. We have the, the storm hardening projects. We, we have the infrastructure <clears throat> spends. We, we have all these different avenues. Well, great. By the time we even get close to the end of that, now we have to refat, re, refurbish it. We have to redo it. We, yeah. This is out of code now. This has now been changed. We don't use that anymore. Whatever the case may be, or it's crumbling, or whatever the case may be, we go back start mm -hmm. it and do it again well the water lead pipes so now right. the epa is big push they don't want to you know flip michigan thing again right so every every water pipe in the ground that isn't already known that it doesn't have lead needs to be physically inspected and tested and if it is lead then it needs to be replaced yeah everywhere yeah everywhere yeah like that is mind-blowing to think about every municipality you know i don't know paint on your walls it was like 1978 is when they stopped putting lead in paint you know, so anything before that, you know, is an issue. Well, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. I don't know when they stopped doing lead and water pipes, but all those older homes everywhere is going to have to be inspected. How are you going to do that? You know, except either hand dig down or hide your back. And, yeah. Um, you know, so it's the opportunities out there. And it's like you, you brought up a good point. It's not that we have to go take this work from somebody else or try to get, you know, market share from these people. The work's out there for everybody. Sure. Um, and so it's been, it's been a fun few years trying yeah. to go, go yeah. around the country and see the different areas and and grow on this so the hydrovac thing really started to enter the picture in 2019 for us yeah yeah it really is uh like december of 2019 perfect time yeah, to start a that. nationwide footprint it's killer timing <laughs> yeah yeah it was you know i've got a glass ball and i was like it's gonna be great so yeah we, we we really put a big push uh on the 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 hydrovac side uh end of 2019 um, you know, again, I, I wanted to diversify away from the oil and gas. Um, I felt it's, you know, just by being in the construction space, I saw, uh, rules, regulations, SOPs changing, uh, mm -hmm. how we approach things, how we did work in, in plant settings, um, you know, paralleling lines, all these things were starting to mandate hydrovac. And, you know, we had these hydrovac trucks internally working, uh, for, our, for our organization, but, you know, I, I felt like we were really missing a, an opportunity to, to capitalize on going outside of our, our own group. So that was kind of the initial play was turn the trucks you had working internally outward yeah and start selling the service yep yeah so, yeah. yeah so the the company i was part owner of we we had four hydrovac trucks but it was again it was just kind of internal service stuff and so when i sold them in 14 or 15 um yeah same thing we just kept them internally and so mm -hmm. that was the big shift was let's going to make this let's focus on this this is going to be the big part of our business we're going to be a hydrovac company you know yeah. on the side of it and not just internally and there's a lot of companies that that do that but 
But our big competition, too, is a lot of what you brought up earlier, which is what we used to be, the contractors with our own, you know, couple of hydroback trucks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we've learned is, is if you're going to do it, like this is a business, you need to go do it. There are so many contractors out there that, not even kidding, that they'll leave their own trucks in a yard because we go out there and if it breaks down, you know, whatever, guys, it's on us, you know, we'll we'll go do it. And, um, you know, these things are 600 grand a piece. I mean, they're unbelievably expensive. Yeah, just the utilization you need. To yeah. justify spending to break even to break even yeah. as a un, a utilities contractor. Yeah. I mean, you have to be like a Michaels for yeah. it to make sense. Exactly, yeah. like, you're, you're dead right. Absolutely, <laughs> <Yeah>. absolutely. <laughs> There's very few that are at that level. Yeah, and then, and like that's what everyone says. Like, oh, you know, I, I should get my own hydroback. Like being in the hydroback space, hydrobacks are paying the butt. Like they, the, yeah. the the blower issues, the maintenance issues. Uh, you know, you got to keep the utilization up. And you know, everyone thinks it's it's a high yield market, but I mean, the margins are, are thinner for sure, but it's, you know, it, in the, the grand scheme, we're just trying to make sure that we can mitigate all the damages. And, and you know, everyone says, we've had a couple of customers like, well, we're going to go buy a truck. And then within three months, they're like, well, would you like to buy our truck? We don't, we mm-hmm. don't really want to do it. We found out we only needed a hydroback five hours a month. And yeah. it's hard to keep people, it's hard to keep them trained, engaged, on payroll, and, uh, you know, for, for hit and miss work. Well, and the work itself is, is hard. And it, but it, and it's specialized at the same yeah. time. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, you need, uh, you need a CDL. Mm-hmm. You need to work hard. <laughs> like yeah. you, you, you can't be in the truck all day. You're, you're out there working. It's cold. It's hot. Yeah. You're getting blasted with all kinds of stuff with that, that water, that air, yep. whatever it is. Uh, and then you need to know what you're looking for yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And then you're the representative of the business. So typically they don't deal with you guys. Yeah. They, they deal with, whoever's on site driving that truck so now you're customer service yeah and like it's a whole need- <laughs> standalone business unit yeah. that's essentially yeah. what it is is you're a mobile standalone business unit that just travel it. around and so you have to be yeah you have to be well versed and communicate oh like here's our jsa and go through the safety aspect of it and educate people that may have may or may not been around hijavac and and let them know the, the hazards the dangers what to look out for you know way to stay back so no debris uh, then you got to do the tickets. So mm-hmm. you're, you're writing the tickets for the customers. You're you're dealing with customer relations. Yeah, you're doing the job. You're driving. You have to know CDL and DO, you know all your DOT requirements and yeah. regulations. And it's a it's a it's a it's a wild business model, but it's great. You don't have to have hazmat or anything. Uh, if you're on if, like you if you're on certain stuff, you have to have like hazwap or just it varies mm-hmm. on it. it. It all depends on the job. But for the vast majority of what we do. Um, no, you don't need like to. oil and gas or like chemical plants. That's yeah. If, if you're getting into like special, like spill remediation, cleanup, yeah, yeah. um, anything like that, you'll, you'll have to have different, um, uh, has whopper or, um, you know, you know, what is a good business is oil spill cleanup. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's crazy. Wild. It's wild. Yeah. We, we've done a lot of that on the dirt side. Um, yeah. We yeah. try not to get our hydrovacs too involved in that, but you know, the, the yeah. oil patch and yeah, Colorado we do and remediation Mexico. work. I remember spills. It's, it was like dig to China, man. Well, I was like 16 years old, and there was this spill in Montana into the Yellowstone River. A pipeline ruptured. Oh, geez. And it it like it didn't put all that much in the river. Yeah. It was it was a pretty minimal burst in the grand scheme of things. And uh, but the company had to go spend a hundred million dollars on Oof. cleanup to say that they Oof. spent a hundred million dollars yeah. on cleanup or whatever Oof. it is. Like I guess yeah. there's. They just do the math and like, all right, we're going to have to spend $102 million on this <laughs> to get going. <laughs> and then they just go out and they just spend money like crazy. Yeah. And so there were just a bunch of people out in the river, like, you know, turning over rocks. Check. Is there any oil under here? Yeah. There, you know, there's not, but they're, they're getting paid a ton of money to turn over rocks. Oh and my God. Look, there's a duck over there. Let's save it. Um, and the, the kids we were with, they went to the, it was, it was the part of the Yellowstone river ran through their property. Mm. They went out and bought every single Everything at the Polaris dealer in town, everything, every side by side, every quad and leased it all, rented it all oh, to the oil yeah. company for a month, <laughs> oh, yeah. paid off everything in yeah. the month. Oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and they're buying jet boats. They had helicopters. So they were, they were just renting everything oh, they God. could to the oil Genius. company. Yeah. 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 Overnight yeah. rental company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so wild. when did you stop bidding work? From a dirt stuff standpoint, pretty much 2019 because really? it, it it got hot and heavy quick. Um, you know, we went from like four trucks to 60 in the past couple of years. 
Um, and then the, the that was actually good timing from an oil market standpoint, though. Oh yeah, because the well, that's the other thing is oil went to negative thirty eight dollars a barrel. I think in t- April of twenty twenty, it just fell through the floor. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. we were so stoked that we were starting to diversify and get spread out in a different industry because essentially our legacy business, and that's why we wanted to get away from it, because the the volatility of it, it went to zero, and then maybe below that. So yeah. it just everything shut down overnight. You know, because we we built our model even on the the construction side. It's like, hey, well. We'll always focus on maintenance because, you know, my 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 famous thing is like if oil is ten dollars a barrel or a hundred dollars a barrel, you always have to do maintenance. Mm-hmm. So like, let's mm-hmm. put an emphasis on that. And we built a, a good foundation on the maintenance side, but when that happened, they were like shut wells in. Just mm-hmm. we're not going to do maintenance because they're not even flowing. Shut them in. We're done. And it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, nobody's driving, nobody's traveling. Yeah. Nobody, you know, we can't. We're not going to sell this stuff. So let's yeah. just yeah, let's just stop. Yeah, and that that leads to a phone call to us. Like, uh, yeah, we don't need you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Like, well, well, I got 60 of them. What, what do you mean? That's the interesting thing about the oil patch, too, is everything's structured to just turn off at any time. Yeah. So they like it's very inefficient at the grand scheme of things. Yeah. The oil companies, they don't own their crews and, and all these yeah. subcontractors, all this rented equipment, everything. But it's all it's it's less expensive, apparently, to do it that way. And then to shut it off whenever you can than yeah. to have it all yourself. Yeah. But it's like within 24 hours, they can just turn a fucking field off. Yeah. And they did. You know, we, we, we shut it down and, uh, you know, that, yeah, they're just like, oh yeah, we, we don't need you guys. Like, let's just hold here. And then in my mind, I'm like, what does that mean? Is that, <laughs> is that two weeks to flatten the curve? Is that real? Or is this two years to flatten the curve? Cause, uh, we all know what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And, you know, hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Um, but it went to zero. So we, we really just, I, I took a lot of our focus off that and everything went into the hydroback side. So Brad and I just started traveling trying to get this spun up. We went from Colorado to Idaho I, or Colorado to Wyoming. And then we started down in Texas, Kansas city, Tennessee, mm. North Carolina, Virginia beach, Florida. So we just started like going out, getting, you know, getting trucks set down. Cause they, they are, they're standalone business unit. Yeah. So we're planting roots and growing and growing. And we, we put all of our emphasis on, on growing that out while the oil and gas piece was down. So it's like, Hey, not much is going on anyway. So let's yeah. just really, really hammer down on this side. And so we did till now. Well, we're still doing it. Yeah. But. And our, our oil and gas is definitely, it's came back. I yeah. mean, a, a lot of what we're doing. So we still kept that, you know, that portion of our business. But instead of being, you know, 75% of our revenue, now it's 25% of our revenue. I got yeah. um, And it's back to what it was doing. So yeah. you know, that tells you how much we've grown on the, on the hydrovac and locating side. Yeah. 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 yeah and, so. and, and so that's, it's, it's going beyond, Vac trucks now too into locating, which is yeah. the natural, natural right. progression. Yeah, yeah, and that's our our whole thing is we we want to build a, a a great model for underground damage prevention. Um, you know, we we said earlier is why do you need a hydrovac? Well, because you don't trust locates. Mm-hmm. Well, then what? Well, why don't we try to fix the problem of let's go out, let's do private locates, let's confirm, let's you know do different methods if it's GPR if you if you can use it in certain areas like. Let's try to give a great solid product that then will minimize our hydrovac side, which is counterintuitive. You don't want to try to minimize a product, but for us, we're like, hey, if you if we can try to be very, you know, we'll be spot on our locates, then you don't have to be chasing lines because we'll go out to some jobs and we we slot trench for 10, 15 feet trying to find a line that mm-hmm. was mismarked. Yeah. So we're we're trying to bundle a, a package for the customers um that minimizes hydrovac at the end of the day because we know it's an expensive product like we, you don't want us out there for 10 hours trying to chase a line like, and it's it's not necessarily value add like, hydrovac? yeah yeah you're not you're not helping to build the project for example yeah. it, it is value add yeah like it but it's it's not it, in yeah. the traditional sense yeah. i totally get yeah. what you're saying yeah. right so like um you know some some of the stats we've seen they're kind of all over the place but depending on what you read there was one that was like um annually 62 billion dollars is are added to construction projects across the country because of uh, line you know, strikes. Line strikes. Yeah, sure. And so you know, yeah, we're not a value add. I mean, we're we're cutting right into their you know budget line. But mm-hmm. our hope is by you know you not hitting this fiber line, we're on a, I'm not going to say names. We're on a project up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, um, and and somebody <laughs> hit a fiber line that that ran. That's a, that's a bad day. Yeah, that's it, a really bad. It day. ran like this whole half of Cheyenne. Shut shut it down. You know. So and they were doing fence posts. Which is like you're not even oh. thinking about this stuff. Yeah. So now they came out and said, "Look, we got to hydrovac every single one." Yeah. So a project like that might cost you hundred grand, you know, for a hydrovac to come out there for you know a couple hydrovac trucks for a month to do every single fence post, which seems ridiculous. But put that uh, against 
pop at a fiber line that shuts out down power to you know a hospital or yeah, you know, schools or crazy you know, yeah and so and, and then there, there's the the negative PR piece of of this organization it's a pretty large organization that's well known that they just did that and mm-hmm. everyone's looking at them and like well you know you guys need to do this and that's that's what then goes into the regulation piece or like SOPs uh, because they're, everyone starts pushing them like well you shouldn't do this you should do it better you yeah. should do it safer smarter and it really pushes them to to do it. I mean. You don't think about it on a fence post, but it, it was terrifying well, for there's, them. There's a video on the internet of some guy driving a fence post and it hits a gas line. Yes. yes. And the whole, th- the yeah. whole just thing. Blows yeah. the dude away. Yeah. 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 But he was fine. Yeah. Yes, he like, ran away. But you, Thank God it didn't spark. Mm, yeah. 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 Whoa. That's, yeah. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. And that was one of the, the, the driving forces with me is you want to talk about mismarked lines on the construction side. I was out on an excavator once and it was. 38 feet off of okay. the marks were 30 feet off yeah. i don't know I, got the I mean, map upside down yeah exactly i don't know or something. i don't know how the hell that happened but dude just walked through the field and just painted a line wasn't the line that we were yeah it was it was way off because there's nothing over there and i i was in the excavator and hit the line and oh. you want to talk about a terrifying experience yeah that'll make you pucker up real quick yeah the um but in in the locator's defense they're just going off the as builds Correct. Or just the plans, how it should have been. They don't even have as built. But, I mean, there's methods of, you know, I mean, you, you got to, yeah, you, yeah. Gotta, you know, a lot of people, and this is, there's a lot of issues, and, you know, this is my opinion on, on the industry, because this is where people in the locating world would get upset. Some people just go out and mark where they think it should be, instead yeah. of tying on to it and actually sweeping and going through and confirming and going against historical and, and what you got on the map. Um, because some people just get paid per locate, per yeah. per call, per yeah. ticket. So they, they try to move quick. I get it. You're, everyone's trying to make money. Um, and we've seen a lot of and they're not They're not liable. Can uh, they be held liable? There, there's, li- yeah, be. there's liability for be. it. Um, but again, there's, there's a lot of larger firms that have great protections and, yeah. and systems in place. But you know, at the end of the day, it's a terrifying it's a terrifying experience that, you know, uh, I don't want to try to replicate with anyone. And, you know, it, it is it, people do get, get complacent at times and it's like, oh, it's fine. I'm not going to get it. And then those teeth get it. Well, and, and we we had a, uh, a subcontractor on the road project I was working on in Texas. And they hit the same gas line three times. Really? Yeah. It was a small gas. line. It was like yeah. a two inch line. But the yeah. same one. But yeah, the, yeah the same fucking line yeah. in the same <laughs> yeah. alignment. Yeah. It's like. You guys, you you know you do this here. Yeah. Somewhere here. We've yeah. already done this. Yeah. We've already, we've already had the fire department out once yeah. and then twice. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. Come on. It and, and we with a lot of these big contractors, uh, you know, if you get dinged every time you hit it, you, you get in the the light with them that's not in a positive manner. Yeah. And then they okay, well you had one line strike. Like, what are you gonna do to mitigate that? And then if you have a second one, like, all right, well, your contract's in jeopardy, what are you gonna do to mitigate that and how are you gonna move forward? So it's with with each line strike, it becomes increasing increasing pressure uh, from the asset owner to to try to mitigate or, or not happen, and then ultimately that rolls down to us and people are like, okay, well we need to start hijacking more, and we need to start mm-hmm. making sure we have eyes on, which is it's good, you know. Well, and and you see the wave of it. It's like they'll have a couple line strikes like that, and then we'll be out there hijacking like crazy. They don't hit anything, and then yeah. you know somebody's looking at a spreadsheet, being like, good God, we spent you know three hundred grand on hijack stuff. What yeah, are we let's, doing? Let's, like, on, yeah, let's pull those guys back a little bit. And then it's like, oh, we only need one uh, truck. Right, I yeah. don't need you. And then all of a sudden, boom, they start getting hit again, and we're right back out there. Yeah, and I get it. I, I mean. It, that's yeah. you know that's the business but yeah yeah but, it's but funny to see that i guess you guys are trying to create more of a comprehensive damage pre- prevention yeah. business yeah. yeah if 62 billion dollars is spent like let, let's be proactive instead of reactive let's try to get that down to if you use hijack is it a billion more is it two billion more if you hijack everything great that's better yeah. than six you could save 60 billion dollars and just like the education in into brad's point yeah it, it's there's ebbs and flows of it as people hit more lines they use more hijack as they as they don't hit lines they'll kind of fall off and i wouldn't say get complacent but they're trying to save money but ultimately what we're trying to do is educate our customers the asset owners on the front side of like hey let's get out there we can you know let's build it into your 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 pricing that when you go out for your contracts your five-year contracts whatever it is on the utility side uh, try to put our here's our numbers let's yeah. try to build that into your model instead of being an afterthought so we're trying to have a proactive approach to it 
Um, has there been a time in like a market where a contractor hits something pretty expensive and then the other contractors are like, mm, we need to do more of this. Like, yeah. Sucks for them, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, we know we're not doing yeah. probably what we should. So let's, let's R- routinely. Get on. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I'm like, sure. Yeah. We're from the big, the big power company. They'll have three or four main contractors and stuff. And so you'll see it between those guys <laughs> all the time. Like, yeah. oh, wait, they're doing what? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause no, it's, no. it's so funny how everybody is so. They, they think everything is like top secret, like they're the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. well, what's the other guy doing? Oh, the other guy's doing X, Y, Z. You're like, uh, so you know what they're doing. You don't think they know what you're yeah, doing. They know exactly <laughs> what you're doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. 17 of their guys worked for you last year. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What do you think's happening? Yeah. So yeah. true. Yeah. It is, it is funny because, yeah, the, you know, they always think they get the jump on them. They'll come out like, oh, they hit that big line. So we're going to use you guys. I'm like, that's great. Like, yeah. again, at the end of the day, we wanted to be safer for everyone. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's go out and do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so 60 trucks in like all over the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're so, as far as Charlotte, aren't you? Yeah. So we're in our states that we're in right now are, are Charlotte, well, in North Carolina, Florida, uh, Tennessee. Oh, you're in Florida too. Yeah. Uh, yeah Florida. Um, Missouri, Kansas, Texas, Colorado, Wyoming, and Idaho. Holy smokes. Yeah. And three years ago, we were in Colorado. Jeez. Yeah. It's been fun. That's crazy. It's been a fun ride. A lot but, of stress. Well, and there's, and there's a lot more growth on the way. Is the plan? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is just kind of you know, Brad and I talk about this a lot. This is just kind of the, the first stage of it. We're, yeah, we've got our still our, our, swimming lessons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we haven't got out to the sea yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we're, we're we're just setting our roots and and getting stabilized and and getting a uh, a good grasp of each market and the areas our customer base, everything like that. I'm um, trying to build out a pretty comprehensive training program and and really trying to streamline our 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 model. Um, you know, and to your point, you brought up uh, other services that we do. We, we have the utility locating. Um, we have sewer cameras as well. Uh, and then jetter trucks to, as all complementary services to, to help out in each area. And the camera stuff is starting to become uh, uh, required as well yep. by yep. a lot of municipalities. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. they, they want to look at, did you really put the pipe in the ground the right yep. way? Because a yep. lot of times it's not. Yeah. And that camera's going to tell the truth. <laughs> Every yeah, time. <laughs> we'll, we'll run cameras in lateral lines before they run a bore. And so we'll prove it hasn't been hit. They'll run the bore. We run it again. And oh. then they prove like we didn't, which is great, right? So now the contractor, they have that like insurance. That sewer line I got you. fails in, you know, three months. Yeah, that's like, the I have video policy. proof it wasn't us. Wow. So yeah. that, that's starting to be, be mandated. Yeah. As well as, of course, the, the you know, new lines they put in. We'll go down and check out seams and make sure it's, you know, everything's butted up correctly and... And yeah. sealed good, and so it's that's all required. It's all a game like that. You're just I know. Trying to, yeah, it's all insurance policies driven by the lawyers. You're yeah. Just, like I, on one job, I had to go take a picture of every sidewalk before we started to touch the road. We were doing utility work. They're like, my boss is like, you need to take a, a GoPro and you need to record every single front yard, every single mailbox, every single driveway, every sidewalk, everything in this neighborhood. And I'm like, yeah. that's the dumbest thing. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's and then, so true sure as shit three months later you know someone's bitching about yeah, hey you, you broke just, my sidewalk yeah you broke my yeah. sidewalk <laughs> and you go back mailbox. to the footage you're like fuck no we did <laughs> like yeah. it's right here yeah it's broke before <laughs> yeah gotcha yeah, yeah. <laughs> no it happens man it, it, anytime they see construction and people are like oh well you, your guys drove on my on my driveway and broke it and yeah you like go look at it and like Man, that's really that's been broke for a yeah, long our, time. Well, uh, and ours is mailboxes a lot because yeah. we got the booms off the truck, and so yeah, we're digging yeah, in people's yeah. yards and stuff. I and yeah, sure. we get people a lot saying, "You, you know, you hit my mailbox. That's why it's all dented. Well, it's all I'm, rusted up." Yeah. It's like, I'm really? sure they have this uh, prized lawn. Yes, uh, oh for sure. Uh, but yes. they have some gas line running below it, yeah. <laughs> and there's some utility work, and they're all pissed off about it. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you're going in there poking a hole in their lawn. Yeah. I mean, but what do you do? Which is yeah. good. We minimize there's, the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's an easement. And yeah. this was here before your house and yeah. you're on. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It is do? what it is. But yeah. I could see how they would be uh, annoyed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, no one wants us in the front yard and try to blame you for the mailbox. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes we do hit the mailbox. Uh, we've we've hit but we, we try to be proactive. Like, hey, we did this. Like, yeah, sorry about the mailbox. Yeah. <sighs> sorry. Yeah. Here's the new one. We'll yeah. put it in for you. We'll take a We've act all your bills out so you're good. Yeah. Yeah. What? Did that project we're just working on. These are big trucks. I mean, these are like you know, really concrete big. mixing trucks. I mean, these, are, these yeah. are big guys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we'll take down tree branches and, you know, in front of people's houses, you know, which sucks. So 
So we, we even have lower profile trucks for those certain areas. And so we mm -hmm. try to, you know, strategically place these smaller trucks, you know, at least one or two in each area and try, we, you know, do our best to navigate that world. But yeah, yeah. It, it's tough. And that's something that we had to learn though, because even coming from Colorado, we don't have many trees in Colorado. You know, everyone thinks sure. we, we do, but like where we're working at in the, the front range area, I mean, it's not uh, as big of an issue as going down to Atlanta. We're, we're in uh, Atlanta for a while and I mean, branches are, 12 feet i mean i know they're yeah. supposed to be cut to 13 13 6 to, to get clearances but we're driving down over uh you know overgrown areas and just dragging them down our lowest truck and yeah. like, oh god like this is completely different than colorado and then you know we're at we had to learn to, to bring the lower profile trucks and try to get underneath this stuff and 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 build uh you know different uh mechanisms to to push the branches up to get our trucks underneath mm. as we're going in front of us and, and backing up it's there's a learning curve for sure i uh i always uh, when I go to Savannah, they have the the historic oak trees that they can't touch. Yeah. And, and so they're hanging pretty low. Yeah. And every once in a while, you'll get a truck that comes through like a box truck and all the way down the road, just <laughs> whack, 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 yeah. whack, whack. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Absolutely. Like, this is great yeah. to watch. It's like a popcorn. <laughs> like, I'm just going to grab a popcorn and enjoy it. But the, you know, the top of the truck's probably just shredded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Looks like a cheese grater just <laughs> all the way across it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's funny too. Those box trucks. It's like you can go. I can go rent up nearly a thirty foot box truck with a driver's license. Isn't that That's crazy? Like, That's why I love you all. Like the, the, they <laughs> load this thing to the what? brim. Yeah, <laughs> good this luck. This guy can't drive a Prius, and you gave him a thirty foot box yeah. truck. Yeah, oh, and coming God. down Wolf Creek in Colorado. I mean. Well, I and, I and I love seeing them with you know holes in them and that kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite thing is that you can give an eighty year old man or or woman a uh a motor home and they, yeah. don't, they don't need to see yeah. it's got air brakes got everything else yeah. like nah you're you're good <laughs> yeah dude i don't trust in your buick why are you in this thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy. just imagine joe biden just <laughs> behind the wheel of a 40 foot <laughs> 40 foot rv <laughs> down the interstate you have your three kids in the movie I, like, yeah i don't feel good about no, that yeah. yeah this is not okay the good thing is it's got stairs to get in the motor home so i don't think he'll make it in yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a ramp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh God. Oh boy. Uh, well, yeah. You guys are off to off to the races. Off to a hell of an adventure over the next few years. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's uh, it's looking forward to it, man. It's uh, it's it's great to you know historically we've we've been confined to. I would like to say undesirable areas to work in Midland, Texas, uh, Carlsbad, New Mexico, yeah, Williston, Dickinson, yeah. yeah, Williston, North Dakota, <laughs> yeah, and Bismarck, Williston. all those areas that's just like, you did it for work. You went there, but now we get to be in like Tampa, Miami, Charlotte, Nashville, Tennessee, like yeah. areas that it's great to do business there. It's great to be part of the community. And it's also just great to visit as well mm -hmm. i don't think i'd ever go to wilston just to like go with my family yeah, yeah i've out. been to, i've been to wilston once it's like i've been here yeah mark it off <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't need to be here again you sure it's yeah. great in the winter time i heard it's beautiful i heard though it i was there mm, the three years ago like 2019 okay and i think it was like 2014 15 where it was just popping off yeah, oh, yeah. like yeah. it just yeah. fucking blew up yeah. and women were going missing like is wild. It was like the wild, wild it west. Truly wild. Yeah. yeah, the stories were crazy. Yeah. So by the time we got up there, it was like they had a Starbucks in town now, <laughs> and it was like yeah. a little bit more established. Yeah. Well, yeah. Back in the day when it was booming, we'd go up there, and they they wouldn't even stock the shelves at the grocery stores because so many guys were coming and getting <laughs> stuff. They would just leave it on pallets, just in the yeah. warehouse, and, like, and it's that, gone. Yeah, that's how you. That's and how people you were living in shopping. the Walmart parking lot. They were just parked out there with like yeah, I'm sure plywood around it to try to keep it winterized, and just living in the parking lot. Dude, it's yeah, wild. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. But it was like these twenty-year-olds going up yeah. there and just making the killing. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. they didn't care. And, and like I think at the time it was at like twenty fourteen fifteen time frame. Uh, God, what was it? McDonald's. I can't remember. They, they had a sign like paying thirty six dollars an hour to work at McDonald's. Think, well, and that's what put Williston on the map. Yeah. Was was that? It, I think it was the McDonald's wage, and yeah. everybody was like. What the fuck yeah. is going on? North yeah, Dak where's the, where is North Dakota? Yeah, and they started to like Google like <laughs> right. No, and, and, true. Then, and then more people went up there because yeah. they wanted a piece of the action. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was real. Yeah, oh, it was real. It was real cool. awful because then you had to compete with that. Like, they're like, well, the guy at McDonald's is making thirty six dollars an hour. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I'll give you forty, forty five. Like, yeah. where does it stop? You know, it just keeps going from there. It's wild. 
not, and then yeah, to to get an apartment or a shop, anything is so expensive. Mm. So I'm glad it kind of calmed down. Well, and what you were talking about a second ago, like trying to recruit guys. I mean, yeah, you could offer them tons of money and stuff, but yeah. even just to go to those areas, right? So like, like you're saying, we're just getting started, which is true. I mean, we have we have these big plans to go all these, you know, more places, and and but they're but they're cool places, right? So like, yeah. it makes the recruiting a little bit easier. Yeah, because we're we're just limited by good good people you know like if it, it's all about the guys right i mean if if we have a good guy in an area and, and we've learned we, we've had, had some not so good guys and some phenomenal guys so if we're, if we're in an area it's because we've got an awesome guy there sure and uh and, and and it works you know so if we can get that guy you know not only to work for us but it's a lot easier say so, hey why don't you come you know live in nashville you yeah know, instead yeah. of midland yeah. texas or something yeah it's just it's such a and, and the autonomy your people have is pretty remarkable i mean they're out Kind of on their own. Yeah, totally on their own. All the time. Yeah. yeah. So you have to find a very specific, it's almost like, it's like a franchise. Yeah. It, like, it is. They're really a, yeah. almost like operating a business. Yeah. 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 In a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, you know how it goes. Like you travel around to job sites with me and Cameron get there. Everything's perfect. Trucks are great. You know, customers are happy. Everything's good. You know, and it's like, I, I have no idea if that's what it's like, you know, yeah. three days after I leave, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's yeah. like, see, so but we, we've, we've been lucky, man. We've been really fortunate. We have some, some phenomenal guys that, that work for us that, um, you know, are honest, um, you know, trustworthy, hardworking, and because we've had some that haven't been, and, and it yeah. eventually shows itself. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if it doesn't get too far down the road, it's not fixable. That's just part of the game, though, I've learned, too, is I think people get so bitter about people. Yeah. Which I don't think is a very good path to go down. No. They just get so bitter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to get screwed. You're going to get great people. You're going to get not great people. You're going to yeah. have people that fit your business for a little bit and yeah. then don't fit your business. Like that's just part of it. And if you're a sport about it and you try to do the right thing along the way and you have a good attitude about it, it's not yeah. that bad. Like it's exhausting, Yeah, but you can take it in two different ways. I just see so many people just like, just so fucking bitter. About yeah. It, yeah. Which would just be such a tiring way to live. Oh yeah. It's exhausting. I'm sure. Yeah. To, to always be negative about everything. No. And it's, you know, what made it really tough too is, I mean, during COVID, finding employees was tough. Like yeah, that. period. It was, period. It was, yeah. That was yeah rough. Well, you can't work from work from home, and then everybody was getting paid a lot of money. Oh yeah, yeah. stick around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was real. Yeah, it it really <laughs> it was, was real. It was yeah. real, real. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, it was a fun time for sure, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, you know, everyone says, yeah, they talk negatively about it, but it, it it's a it's a challenge, man. I mean, like. You, you just got to keep moving. You got to figure it out. Like, yeah, okay. It's really hard to find people. Cool. What can we do differently? How can we get people? How can we recruit people? How can we retain people? You know, what are people looking for? You know, and, and it's kind of definitely aligned with what you're trying to accomplish here is, uh, you know, you, you, you got to build out a different mindset and, and with, with people and, and how you train them, how you interact, you got to make it a, a place that people want to work. Yeah. Like, and people are like, well, it's it's a job, so just take it. Like, no, nah, yeah, they yeah. should just fucking deal with it. Yeah, like, like, oh. you can get a job anywhere, man. Like, yeah. you gotta love what you do. At the yeah. end of the day, we spend more time with with everyone at work than our own family. So it's like, all right, make it enjoyable. Yeah, yeah to mm -hmm. some degree. I'm not saying you know, it's balance castles and parties all the time, but <laughs> no, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's hard work. It's tough. Well, man. and 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 enjoyable. It it varies too uh like purpose is part of yeah. i think your overall enjoyment of something yeah. so if you have if you're able to uh attach that purpose to that work oh okay like i yeah, yeah i'm working hard yeah i'm kind of miserable right now because yeah. it's fucking cold <laughs> yeah but i know what i'm doing is important so yeah. this is great at, in the grand scheme of things yeah um i think that purpose is is a big deal which is wild like at no point, I think, you know, th that's that's a, a trending or a buzzword, you know, like, I, want, I want a purpose in my work. Like before, even when I was, I used to work on the rigs before this, like I never uh, equated the two of, of, of purpose and work. Like, you know, I was young too, but now everyone's, yeah, they, they want a purpose. Yeah, money's great. Yeah, everyone wants money, but yeah. they, they want to know that they have uh, an input into the organization, that they, they feel valued, that they feel um, like they're, what they're doing is making a difference, which is it's wild in the construction space because like, that always seemed like such a soft, a soft value for like mm -hmm. tech companies or, or t the tech world. But like even in the construction space, like, oh, I, I want to know that I got value. I'm like, oh, perfect. Yeah. But the, the tech space, they have to manufacture all this bullshit yeah. to make that purpose. Like, yeah. A lot of it's just totally manufactured. Oh, absolutely. And, you, and you look at your their mission, you're like, what is it? What does that even mean? <laughs> like generating value by cutting, you know, cutting waste with our... Yeah. 
Yeah. Amazing software product. Like yeah. it's like, what does that mean? Yeah. What what how can you get behind yeah. that? Uh, yeah, but yeah. No I don't, I don't know what that it means. Yeah. But but the uh, construction building stuff, it yeah. already it has that. It just needs to be yeah. explained. It just needs to be talked about. But it 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 very much exists. Yeah. More so than most other industries. Yeah. Like we were talking about dinner last night. There are some worlds that don't create a lot of value. Yeah. You know, push push yeah. some paper over here, push some paper yeah. over here, but what do you really create at the end yeah. of the day? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whereas somebody building stuff is creating something yeah. every single day. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's something you leave at the end of the day. Like that's I did benefiting that. somebody. Yeah. 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 And it, honestly, too, like uh, I've heard this from a lot of our guys is like they 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 feel value and a, a sense of pride in the the work and and being with Hydrovacs and in, in particular is because they they feel like they've helped protect someone or or, yeah. or keep someone safe, so they didn't hit that line and in and added value of like, all right, cool. That guy in the excavator, like he knows the line is, he's not going to strike it. Like, yeah. you're, you're taking out that. And I didn't even think of it at that point of, but I, I, you know, we profess that we talk about it like, oh, it's, it's a real value add. But for the, the individuals that are doing the job to feel that it's, it's that's, a little bit different. It's like, no, nah, yeah. that's pretty good. It is. And it's like, oh, like, you know, and you know, I was talking to the field, I was like, guys, so like, why do you like doing this? I'm like, oh, cause that guy right there is going to go home at the end of the day. I was like, oh, that's, wow. That's phenomenal. I'm like, okay. That's like, yeah. deep. Yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I, you know, I think about it and you hear it and you know, that it's what we do, but to hear it from our guys and, and girls in the field, like, hmm. like, oh, yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. I have never thought about it like yeah. that. Yeah, because you know it's like the brother's keeper rule. You know they got to protect everyone out there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You're so, like you're like Batman essentially. <laughs> that's exactly. Yeah, don't tell him that. <laughs> I need a Batman Batmobile now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's pretty similar. Or a Prius, either. Pretty one. similar. Yeah. yeah, black Prius. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. Yeah, but you know it, it's just cool to hear that stuff from the the, the guys and girls in the field. And I say that because yeah, we got like eight girls that work for us. Uh huh. Yeah. So, but, yeah. So, Pretty good workforce. How do people find you guys? A lot of word of mouth. It's a yeah. it's a small yeah. world when you get in the hydrovac stuff. So you were hitting on something that's, of course, hiring is one of the biggest challenges for anybody. But you know, because it's not just the truck driver, but they gotta have the CDO. You know, but wait, you mean I gotta drive this big truck there, and then I gotta get out? Mm -hmm. You know, and and work. And like yeah, yeah. we're on the job today. You know, it's perfect weather today. You know, that's easy. Yeah, come to you know Colorado and. February, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, or, with yeah. freezing water or be here yeah. in July. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, July. like it is really hard work. Um, but it is a, it's, it's a small world. Um, really small world. Um, it really is when you get out there. Um, and what, what's really cool. The, the last big manager we hired, um, he, uh, he reached out to us through one of our truck salesmen is, is how he got directly to us. But he, when he did, He's like, I, I've known about you guys. I've been following you guys like on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever. Mm, yeah. And he's like, you know, every couple of weeks I hop on and you guys have turned another state orange in our yeah, map. And yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, I knew, he's like, I knew that was coming to our state. And he's like, I'd rather be, you know, part of this orange dot that's coming than, you know, fight against you guys when you guys get here. Uh, I was like, that was a cool feeling. So we've, yeah. we've been working so hard, you know, putting these orange, these orange spots across the country. No, that's where... And perception is part of it. And that's yeah. where I, I see the orange. Uh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and we haven't talked about it because it's online. Yeah. And I, yeah, you guys are in different. I'm like, fuck, you're really, they're really yeah. sending it. Like, yeah. This is pretty, pretty cool. And, and, and uh, yeah, I saw one of your trucks a few weeks ago. I texted yeah. you. Like, yeah, we opened up in Tennessee. I'm like, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it was just a matter of time, I guess. Yeah. 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 Here they are. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. Man. We, we want to, you know, there's, there's only one really nationwide provider and, you know, we'd, we'd like to, to try to, to build a footprint out. And it's a little animal. It's a little, yeah, it's it's a little, little vicious animal. animal. <laughs> <laughs> a vicious little animal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Badger. Yeah. yeah. Dude, but and again, they, they've done an, the, uh, an, uh, an amazing job, a phenomenal job of building it out and, and educating the customers and, and really teaching people before Hydrovac was a, a thing, really, and on what well, Hydrovac is. In a lot is. of ways, yeah, they've paved, they've paved the path yeah, for totally you guys. Have. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because they've yeah. taken it mainstream, essentially. They have. Yeah. 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 So now when yeah. we go, yeah, it's not what is Hydrovac and what, what does it do? Because the majority of the people we already deal with, you know, they know the Badgers. They, they know what it does. Now yeah. it's like, you yeah. know, what separates us from, you know, these other companies yeah. and what can we provide you that, you know, maybe they can't. And, um, you know, so that's trying to how we, how we separate it. But yeah, Badger's done a phenomenal job of, of kind of, leading this industry and you were asking earlier you know i'm not sure exactly when hydrovac started i bought my first one in 2011 um 
you know, so I've been doing it whatever, 12, but that, but 13 that years been now. But pretty early on. I mean, it's not like something that's been around forever. No, no. And there no. was- It's um, like quote unquote newer. Newer. Well, I think like on the, the Badger webs, I think they started with their first truck like on a Dodge pickup in like the 70s or 80s. I, I, wow. I can't remember. It was I'm just like a truck. vac unit, vac unit on the back of like a, a Ram truck or yeah. something. I, I have the picture somewhere, but- yeah. yeah, but it, it was, it's been around for a while, but yeah. yeah but, besides Badger, I don't know anybody else that had those. But you guys are like the, the Viet Cong versus the U.S. Marines. Yeah. The, con, <laughs> the, the gorillas versus the conventional force. Yeah. Right. Just <laughs> popping up everywhere. Yeah. Right. Like, where aren't these guys now? Yeah, you just got to keep going, man. Yeah. Just got to keep pushing. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big market for sure. It's a big market. It, yeah, it's huge. Um, uh, no, it's something you guys have done really well, I think, is social media. Yeah. Like, you've, you've always shared about that stuff on social since we, I, mean, I started following um, probably i think i met you in 2020 yeah that was one of the, the before the oh, world shut down right oh, you was met with john Expo. our old social media manager at the time is you john reached out to you you were like getting ready to do a convention before um the australian guy you guys are doing something out of the con expo yeah and he just pulled you aside and was talking to you. And then I came over and met you real quick. And then I went back to talking to customers. Oh, I met you at Con Expo. Con Expo, yeah. Oh. The first that was the year did. they shut it down. They didn't do like the last day oh, or two. Yeah. They kicked us all out of Vegas. I thought I leave. originally met you here because you were driving a truck through. I, I met you that time. But yeah. that time it was like a quick handshake. John, my, my social media manager at the time, was talking to you because you know he, we just hired him like two months before. And he, he wanted to pick your brain because you were blowing up in the, the space on, yeah. as far as uh, – uh, multimedia and everything like that that was a flash it's, in the pan it's still going it's man still... downhill from there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you're, just, you're blowing up in the space and, and getting going so you, yeah you wanted to pick your brain and i came by shook your hand real quick i, I didn't even really know at that point but that's yeah then i reached out to you in 2020 yeah when we just started charlotte and i came through and was talking to you then okay yeah that's oh. when i was driving a truck that's you know Getting started. I was the one still driving the truck across the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, you, you pulled up to the coffee shop yeah. in, in a, a fucking back truck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In a C10. Yeah. 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 Hey, That's awesome. Can you buy my coffee, please? <laughs> it feels expensive. Uh, yeah. 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 It, was, it, was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, I was, was like, good. yeah, he's legit. Like, yeah. he at least has one. Yeah. Yeah. It's just right here. <laughs> yeah. I see it. It's real. Yeah. I rented yeah. it that day and now wrapped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, that was, yeah, that was in 2020 as well. So that must have been like, I think at the tail end of 2020 that I, I met you here in uh, Tennessee. I got you. Yeah. But, yeah. But back to your point, we started on about social media stuff. I think Cam has oh, yeah. done a good job of, on, on pushing that and getting, you know, the awareness out there and, you know, of us and keeping, you know, he has a brand, he has a vision and this is what, you know, he pushes. We, you know, yeah. we encourage our managers to post and, you know, do their things. We're not, we're not somebody that polices that, you know, really strict. I've made a couple phone calls like, Hey, I want to take that one down or, you know, yeah, whatever. Sure, but, sure, sure. but for the most part, I mean, our, the, the area managers probably do more than anything for us just by posting and having fun with it. And we do photo contests internally, you know, who has the best post wins a $50 gift card, at, yeah. you know, something. And, um, and, and, and it, I, for what you're all doing, it's a big deal because it establishes that awareness before you even come to a market. Like yeah. you were talking about with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you can't buy that. That's, no, that's, that's big time. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we, we do, we do, we want to be a household name in the industry as far as backdrops, just like Badger, you know, that, yeah. You just know who they are. Like You we, just know who they are. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. we want to get to that level as well. And, you know, we got to be forward facing. And that's ultimately, you know, that's why we want to engage you as well. And, and have you start working on our, uh, our our websites and our social media as well. Because yeah. you've done a phenomenal job. Yeah. Your it. stuff's next level, man. It's, yeah. It's, <sighs> oh, it's I, really cool. I do none of it. So <laughs> don't give me the credit. <laughs> well, you're, you're at the helm. So, you know. Yeah. You, no, I think. You have I'm, definitely input. I'm not sure what we're doing with you guys specifically, but. Once you guys meet with the team, I think it'll yeah it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, they do some crazy, yeah we're excited crazy about cool it. Work. We're excited yeah. about that because there's a lot of stuff we do that could get some awesome footage, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, really that's cool the, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We have this vision. I want to accomplish these things, but I'm not a I'm not a marketing expert. Like, yeah. What I yeah. think is right and what is actually right may be wide, w just wildly uh, off. So that's why <laughs> engaging a professional as well. Because uh, I'm like, oh. We should post this or we should rebrand this way. And I might be so far off, but it might be detrimental. We've done a little vac truck work with uh, Earthview in Florida. Earthview. And, and then uh, we worked with Anna a little bit. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I saw it like about a month ago or something you posted on that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I didn't post it, but yeah, yeah. we worked with her a little bit and I saw yeah. you guys were. Yeah. Sent me a picture of 
like yeah. a bunch of fucking guys in a camera van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were <laughs> testing it out. We had yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was like 10 guys. <laughs> I think I texted her. I'm like, I bet it smells great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that poor so AC true. was yeah. barely keeping yeah. up. Yeah. It was Charlotte's about yeah. 98 degrees. Yeah. Oh, it was hot. Like a humidity. sprinter van. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a very I, big. I kept walking the front and cracking the window. <laughs> <laughs> Close it back up. <laughs> Yeah, it was not a it's not the best situation, but we were trying to learn the product. We were yeah, you know, yeah, yeah gotta get out there, figure it out. Yeah, yeah, poor well, Anna. gotta be in it. Right on. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, and if people want to check you guys out, ng companies, just yep. go Google it. Yeah, ngcompanies dot com. Yeah, yeah. ngcompanies dot com. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, depending on what the rebrand looks like with you and your team, you got to be rebranded in a few yeah. months with you. Exactly. Yeah, I'm excited. We're redoing all that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to say ngcompanies.com unless your team tells us uh, otherwise. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that'll change. <laughs> yeah, so okay, so ngcompanies.com. Yeah, there we yeah, go. I think we're safe. Yeah, Google us. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks, right. Aaron. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, man. <laughs>